Hey y'all, share all over at Signify Me invited me to do this collab about how I film my videos. Now, if you're not into like the back side of videos and editing and filming, go ahead and turn this off because this is going to be boring to you and I don't want to put you to sleep. That's not okay. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my iPhone so you can see my camera setup. This is my camera. It's a GoPro Hero 4 and it has this lovely mic on it and my Joby flexible tripod. This is my go-to camera for filming my videos. I'm back with the GoPro. I use my camera every once in a while to film, like if I'm out and about and I need to film something to add into a video, but for the most part, I don't. What do I like about my Hero 4? It's small. It's super easy to put anywhere. I throw it in my purse. Um, it's easy to travel with. I, I can put it in my purse to carry on to an airplane if I'm going somewhere or, you know, I don't have to carry a big bag with me when I go out. It, it fits anywhere. And when I was walking around Columbia, I just held it right here. And it wasn't super conspicuous like a big giant camera with a, a big microphone would be. It has a ton of accessories. Like this camera, I can, I can get it for underwater. I can get it for weatherproof. I can get a little strap to wear it on my head. I actually have all that because it's a tech thing. Mauricio has to have the latest, greatest tech thing. So when the Hero 4 came out, he wanted one. And so I got him that as a Christmas present, I think. Um, so this is a camera I had. It's not a camera I invested in for YouTube because if I were gonna invest in a camera, it would not be a GoPro. So that actually is a good transition into what I hate about my camera. I like to record in 4K because I figure YouTube is headed in that direction and at some point all images will be 4K probably, you know. At some point, it'll be like sitting in the living room with me. I always record in 4K and on the GoPro in order to record in 4K, you actually have to film in fisheye and I do not like fisheye. It, you know, it's hard to watch videos that are filmed in fisheye over the long term. So I have to crop them. So I have to crop all of my videos and I hate doing that. Another thing I don't like about the GoPro, the video um, screen is on the back. So I have a bad judge of where I am in position to the camera. You know, I can be over here or over here and still look like I'm looking straight on at the camera, but I'm not actually doing that. And so, um, I have to kind of wing it. So I have to set the camera kind of far back for me. So I end up cropping it a lot more, which is good for cropping out the, the fisheye part, but I, it's super annoying and I do not like it. So I've been known to take my iPhone video camera and place it behind my screen. And so I can kind of see what I'm seeing in that camera. Um, so that works out well when I do that. Ideally, if I could have any camera in the world right now, I'm kind of currently obsessed with the DJI Osmo. And the reason I am is because I would like to do, as you know, I like to film out and about, but I can't do walking videos really well because part of dystonia involves having a tremor. So if you look at my hands, they actually shake all the time and it's super annoying. And so for me to hold a camera, it's always moving around. I'm sure you'll, you'll see that this is going to be out before most of the Columbia videos. But if you look at the on our way to Columbia video, you'll notice that there's a lot of movement in the camera and that really, really was not cool with me. So the DJI Osmo is like a, you know, a, a stick camera and then it integrates the iPhone here as your, you, you manage everything on the camera from your iPhone. Um, but it has image stabilization. It's relatively small, like my GoPro, but the image stabilization is what I want. I want to be able to move my hand around and have the image focus where I need it to focus and not worry about me shaking and moving the camera. Now let's get into the mic I use. I have a super cheap mic that we've had since before we bought our camera. Now the GoPro right now, because I'm talking to you and about to talk about my mic, I actually took the mic off. So this is what my camera sounds like with the mic off. 
this is what the camera sounds like with the mic on. This is my mic, and I also was able to get this lovely mic windscreen, which is awesome. Um, this thing was, I don't even remember, it was super cheap. I'll try and link all these things down below if you're interested. Um, all my gear, I'll go ahead and link everything down below. So if you're really interested in spending money, um, you're welcome to do so. The windscreen is phenomenal. I'll take you outside now and show you. Um, it's super windy today, so I should be able to get some really good video of what it's like with and without the windscreen. This is what it sounds like without the windscreen. You can see how much my hair is blowing. There's actually quite a bit of wind right now and um, can see the hairs getting in the way of the windscreen. That's the only downside of the windscreen, but it, you know, makes it for a much better audio quality. So totally worth the investment. As you can see, the windscreen is actually a huge asset. So well worth the investment of, uh, you know, the few bucks that it costs. Let's talk about my computer and my computer setup. I sit on my bed at all times, mostly. Sometimes I sit down in the living room with my laptop, but for the most part, I sit on my bed. Um, I don't have a desk in this house, which I hate. Um, I also don't have a desktop. I wish I had a desktop. I, that is like one of my dreams when we're debt free is to get one of those huge Mac desktops with the giant screens. And yeah, that would be, oh, that would be ideal in my world. This is my video editing setup. I have a MacBook Pro, which is Mauricio's old computer. Um, we had to get some work done on it and um, he was worried about uh, not having a stable computer for school. So we thought this one was completely dead. So we went ahead and bought him a new one for school. Uh, he was in the middle of school at the time it died. And then we decided when I started talking about doing YouTube, we took this over to the Apple store to see how much it would cost to get um, whatever was wrong with it fixed. And as it turns out, it was like a $75 investment. <laughs> Yeah, we spent a lot of money on a new computer for Mauricio for no reason. Um, but that's a whole nother story. We got this one fixed and I use this one exclusively for film, for editing my videos. Well, wait, I shouldn't say that. I don't use it exclusively. I use it for a lot of things, but I exclusively edit my videos on this computer, meaning I only edit my videos on this computer. I don't edit anywhere else. I don't edit on my phone. I don't film on my phone most of the time, anything like that. And then I edit my videos in iMovie. I love iMovie, but for someone who didn't even know how to use a Mac when they started this whole YouTube thing, having to learn how to use a Mac, iMovie, a camera that I had never used before, and um, editing software, that was out of control. That was a large learning curve that I had to to um, overcome. But you know, it's what three months in, little, almost four months in now. And um, no, by the time this comes out, it'll be four months in. So I'm I'm really starting to get a good handle on iMovie. I learned everything I know about iMovie by watching YouTube tutorials. I did not take any classes or have anybody to help me. Mauricio didn't know how to use it or anything. I love iMovie now, but it is not user-friendly. There's no intuitive side to it, zero. But now that I know how to use it and I understand it, and I, I you know, when I wanna do something a little more complicated, maybe that I haven't done before, like overlays or something like that, I just go to YouTube and I search for what I wanna do and somebody has always already done a video on it. So, you know, and I generally just kind of figure it out as I go. The pros of iMovie, it's free and it comes on my computer. So that's the biggest pro. That was probably in the beginning, the only pro. Now I like it because it's fairly complex. It, it works really well for me. The con, as I mentioned, it's not at all intuitive. You really have to go and learn how to use it in order to do it. And honestly, I'm a little bit limited in what I can do. I don't like being limited. Um, it kind of irritates me when I want to do something and can't do it, like overlay several things at one time. At some point, I will upgrade to Final Cut Pro, 
but it's a $300 program and I'm not willing to spend $300 right now. I'll probably buy it before Mauricio leaves school because then I get the school discount because Apple has school discounts that are awesome. If you're in school or have a family member that's in school, always look and see if anything has a school discount. A lot of things have school discounts, but that's just a side note. Finally, for editing my pictures, my thumbnails, doing overlays. Overlays are things that insert here into a movie. I do all my overlays in PicMonkey online. The reason I started PicMonkey is actually I had nothing. I wanted to try Photoshop, but I didn't want to spend the money on Photoshop. I was watching a tutorial done by Pennies into Pearls and she started talking about PicMonkey and oh my gosh, I loved it. I started with the free version. I actually now use the paid version. It's fantastic. It really is. It, there are a few little things here and there that I would like it to do that I can't do with PicMonkey, but I sent them a couple of suggestions and they're super responsive. So maybe one day they'll, they'll incorporate those things. It seems like they're always working to incorporate stuff. So that's a pro. Another pro is there are about a million tutorials online and um, then they have their own blog also and then you get emails and everything so there's always new learning to be done the cons the most desired things that you're wanting to do are almost always in the paid version so you know if you want to remove something out of a picture you've got to use the paid version make sure you check out everybody that's participating in the collab if this is the kind of stuff that inter interests you and I'll link their channels down below. And uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you're new. And thanks so much for watching. See ya.